All right, guys, today we're going to talk about the best Pacific Northwest survival knife. And I figured I would probably be one of the better people to make an informed decision, opinion, and knowledge, or have the knowledge on this, seeing as I'm someone who's a lifelong Alaskan, and seeing as Alaska is the most Pacific, the most North, and the most west you know in the the whole u.s as an entirety so i figure alaskans are probably the most qualified to speak about the pacific northwest seeing as we are the most pacific the most north and the most west so in my opinion i feel like this is uh the best that it gets and so obviously i have the best knowledge base on this and seeing as i know a thing or two about survival knives i thought i would be the right person for this task obviously being slightly facetious here, but I do think I know a thing or two, and I do think that these are really solid survival knives, whether you live in the Pacific Northwest or whether you live pretty much anywhere. Now, I will say there are some unique climate um, kind of realities to the Pacific Northwest, and I think honestly many of them are faced by the East Coast as well, if not slightly different, but of course we do have long dark winters and we do get a lot of snow, and so for these types of realities having um, knives that can function well in wet cold ac um, environments is really advantageous so these are the knives um, the top three choices for me that i run and that i think are really solid and i wanted to give three choices here because i know that a lot of knives are not always super easy to come by and of course these lists kind of have to vary and change as the years go by due to that however let's jump right into it so first off and in number three uh, or in the third kind of spot is going to be my very own currently decked out Pacific Northwest survival knife. This is the truck survival knife for me. This is what I usually carry out into the wild. And this is it fully decked out in its setup. It's kind of hard to show it in its entirety, but this is it. So we'll get to the knife in just a moment. But this is essentially how I would personally deck out any of my go-to survival knives. Um, and in due time, these two guys will also get decked out in a similar manner. But essentially what you're looking at here is of course you have your knife in its sheath then you have extra paracord lots of extra paracord lots of extra paracord for use as cordage to tie things up do things paracord is like the duct tape of cordage it's very multi-use and you can do just about anything you need and i also have a little keeper on it to keep the extra paracord kind of tucked away now when it comes to it as well you'll also notice a lot of strapping or webbing nylon webbing this is all tied wrapped around the sheath this is actually what i use to wrap around my thigh so with any of these knives they're decent sized blades right so if you're traveling through the bush with them you don't want this thing flopping around so i like to have a leg strap there to kind of tie it and secure it to my leg so personal preference there you don't necessarily need that but it is there now some more important features to this is of course we have an externally accessible um, ferro rod here this is tied off securely to once again the paracord integrated on the sheath so this is not going to just accidentally slide out of its little keeper and fall off but i do like to keep it tucked up because then it's not you know flopping around and it's all in one homologated unit then of course we have a multi-tool sheath here and you just gotta pull this little guy up and this gives you access to potentially one of the most important pieces of the kit, and that is the multi-tool. Now this, of course, is a Leatherman Surge, and this is a second gen Leatherman Surge, so pretty cool, um, but that is the multi-tool in there, and so it gives you a lot of extra or extended capacity that the knife may not be able to do. Of course, getting pliers, saw, file, um, just tons of extra you know, pieces of goodies in or a whole bunch of extra goodies in that regard as well and of course i have a little um, lanyard on that to kind of just show where it's at so that is the actual survival setup of course i'll show you guys the knife so that's how i would set up a pacific northwest survival knife with a multi-tool ferro rod and a good amount of cordage with those handful of things you can do just about anything because remember especially in the pnw the most important two survival skills to master and to be very efficient at are going to be firecraft and sheltercraft so being able to make fires expeditiously and build shelters expeditiously will be highly important for your 
survival. Now the actual knife in question here is the seven inch version plain edge of the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. This is an older school model, so this is in CPM S35VN, which is not a very favored steel among some, but for me, in my personal opinion, and this knife actually seeing a lot of use and of course modification for myself to help make it a better um, wilderness survival tool. Uh, I have not had or encountered any issues. Obviously my edge is not broken. There is a good amount of use on it. It's hard to see. I know people like to sit here and tell me I never use my knives, but there is actually a good amount of use on this. And there's plenty of videos on my channel of me actually using it. So uh, take it for what it's worth. Um, anyways, next one up is going to be the GSO 5.1 in Magna Cut. Now this one is newer to my collection. I've seen a little bit of use, but um, this one is newer to me. And I think that this one honestly fits a lot of the bill of what my Pacific is or what my Pacific has been for me. And so first off, the sheath is very much in a similar vein. Now, of course, the one uh, for my Pacific is a nylon kind of sheath, but it is modular and you can mount things to it. And that's the most important piece of the pie. And so once again, this is modular, you can mount things to it. And so you can adapt this to um, be a, you know, setup or have a setup, things like multi-tools being rigged off of it, paracord being rigged off of it, and ferro rods of course being rigged off of it so those are the most important parts of it of course this is a modular sheath for that and of course too what is kind of nice is you do have a bit of a spacer here so if you do attach things to towards the back of this sheath so like if you attach survival kits or tins or whatnot to the back of it you do have that ability and space to kind of have that spacer run off and give you that extra room so pretty cool um, the actual blade itself once again very similar to the pacific of course this is a magna cut blade but it is reasonably thick it's about 5 30 seconds of an inch thick so it gives you a decent decent ability to you know have some weight some heft and of course split apart pieces of wood without being overly thick of course we don't necessarily want a sharpened pry bar um, because doing fine tasks is also very important what i like and what i like the most about the survive gso 5.1 similar to the spartan uh, or spartan <laughs> uh, chris reeve knives pacific is that you have a very prominent and very large forward finger choil so you can really choke up really hold on that knife right at the very cutting edge and get good control that really helps when your hands are cold when you have low dexterity and you're trying to make things like feather sticks very quickly just being able to choke right up on that very cutting edge and just peel away at wood is very very helpful and it can help you once again get out of a pinch get out of a bind and it helps you with um, giving you better leverage or maybe less leverage in that regard. It really helps you kind of lock that knife up. So anyways, that is the Survive Knives GSO 5.1 in Magna Cut. Now, last one up is going to be none other than the good old fashioned Cold Steel SRK in CPM 3V. So this one, in my opinion, once again, starting off with a sheath, you do have very similar to the GSO, another very kind of multi-mount, very, um, so you have a multi-mount sheath that is not necessarily great. It's not Kydex, but still holds the knife very well. The Securex sheaths are just fine. Of course, you have many, many multi um, position mounts here. You can run these knives scout style, but you can also tie off paracord. You can tie off um, or you know make room for different sheaths for multi-tool survival tins, stuff like that on this bad boy and really um, do quite well. So modular sheath with lots of mounting options is once again a pre prerequisite if i can english correctly today um but it is a very good to see on that one now this guy is a thick chunky boy closer to a quarter of an inch thick i think this one's three sixteenths if memory serves of cpm 3v so once again you're dealing with a little bit less corrosion resistance than the gso in the pacific that's Part of why I liked the um, Magna Cut on the GSO in the 35 or S35 on the Pacific, it definitely leans more into the corrosion resistance, which once again, when you're dealing with snow, you're dealing with rain, you're dealing with a lot of humidity, having those high corrosion resistant steels is going to be valuable. However, CPM 3V, I would not recommend sleeping on because it does have a decent amount of corrosion resistance. Once again, it can patina, but for me, in my opinion, I really 
I've never hit like a, a horrible point with it. Like O1 tool steel definitely had my rough times with corrosion resistance or lack of corrosion resistance with O1 tool steel. Certainly on many of my 1095 knives, I just straight up blew them. So, you know, that keeps the corrosion resistance to a minimum. But uh, yeah, so for the most part, I will say um, I don't love or it's nice to have extra corrosion resistance out of stainless steels, but it's not necessary. So anyways, the CPM3V is very tough, very um, shock resistant, and so it's going to be a really durable blade. In addition to, this is going to give you six inches of, you know, like I said, 3 16th inch thick CPM3V, so you're going to be able to do a lot with this blade when it comes to shelter craft and fire craft. Of course, once again, sharpened spine for striking ferro rods. The biggest thing that I love about the SRK that the other two don't feature and the reason why this is number one is the fully rubberized handle so it is better for cold climates once again in the pnw regardless to whether you live in washington oregon whether you live in alaska um, you're going to be dealing with some degree of cold weather some degree of winter time for sure There's, it's unavoidable right so having something that is good for cold weather that's not going to get freezing cold um, is very useful and very helpful so I do really like that and of course the price point is going to be very hard to beat on a cold steel SRK even in the higher end or premium CPM 3V still comes in about $150 like it's still pretty tough. I personally got mine for $99 so that well undercuts both of these others the GSO and the Chris Reeve Pacific. Now lastly I think the last winning feature to the cold steel SRK SRK is the availability. The GSO by Survive is a great knife, but very hard to obtain. The you know Chris Reeve Knives Pacific is once again a great knife, but very hard to obtain. And so these knives are, like I said, I think some of genuinely the best of the best when it comes to you know survival and wilderness self-reliance, but they're very hard to obtain. So I think the SRK really bridges that gap and it being a knife that you can actually go out to some stores and get like the SK5 high carbon version of this, you can still get it. You can get it in common sporting goods stores. So it's a reasonable, accessible thing by the common man. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.